All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and model a spatula. Okay, standard issue one: a silicone uh, kind of plastic head, wooden handle, and uh, as you can see in the uh, the uh, preview. We're going to go ahead and talk about a few things beyond just modeling. One is modeling in detail, trying to capture as much of the information as we can. So we're going to eventually get into applying material and appearances on this. Um, but we're also going to talk about ways that we can model this effectively and using the right extrusion commands. So we're going to talk about regular extrusion, intersect, cut, but we're also going to talk about the difference between join and bodies. Do we keep this as a single object or do we go ahead and turn it into multiple objects, um, or as you may remember from Inventor, different parts. Um, another thing that we're going to go ahead and talk about in this is choosing your units, because uh, when I actually modeled the, or, uh, did the dimensions on this, um, I went ahead and used millimeters within a pair of calipers. And by default, uh, it's going to want to work with inches. So let's go ahead and hop straight into it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create our new design. And the first thing we're going to do is change our units. So under document settings, it tells us the unit that's chosen for the object. We want to change that. It pops up on the right side of the screen, and we tell it millimeters. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and make this the default setting. Um, but since I think most of my measurements are in inches, we're going to go ahead and leave that as not default. From there, we're going to go ahead and talk about which one of the profiles we're going to start with. Now, some of you could go ahead and choose to do what would be considered the top view. This is the longest, most descriptive. But for the way that I think I created this model most efficiently, I'm going to use the side, create most of the plastic head, remove some of it, and then go ahead and add the handle. So to do this, starting a sketch on the right side view, and rather than drawing the full shape, we're going to go ahead and use some of the mirroring tools. So I'm going to start off with the construction lines and tell it, uh, let's see, some of my original measurements. So that goes out five millimeters. And then the same thing goes up uh, 52 divided by two. Okay, so 26 millimeters. From here, I shift my uh, dimensions off to the side, grab the line tool again. And then we're going to go ahead and just quickly lay it out. Okay. okay. So this is where I can go ahead and start using some of the constraints to go ahead and square it up. And then I can put in dimensions based on what I know. Okay. So I know that that dimension, um, sorry, not actually that dimension, this dimension is going to be 12 millimeters. And then the distance from there to there okay, is 2.5 millimeters. And then let's see, let's see what is still changing. Ah, and my tip up at the top. That should only be 1.5. Okay. So from here, with the general quarter set up, I'm going to grab the mirroring tool to go ahead and select the lines that I want to copy, and then choose the mirror line to reflect. Now, unfortunately, I can't mirror both sides at the same time, so we're doing the mirror command twice. Once for the horizontal, I can then click and drag deselect my construction line, grab the mirror tool, add the mirror line, and then that goes ahead and solidifies the shape, and we're able to go ahead and start doing the extrusion. So finishing the sketch, switching back to a home view, extrusion with E, and then I know that this is going to be 77 millimeters. Now you may have noticed that I went ahead and kind of did the opposite direction as normal your decision of how you want to approach that. But uh, for this case, I know that the head was going kind of to the left, or at least my left, <laughs> and um, the handle going the opposite direction. So you can handle it either way that you want. But the next step is to go ahead and start putting in the rest of the 
curves of the typical front view. So we've got uh, two portions that we're actually caring about, kind of a smaller section that's mostly enclosing the handle, and then the larger shape overall. We're going to go ahead and get started by sketching for the smaller handle enclosing part. And here we're going to go ahead and uh, project P, the main section where we know that it's going to exist, grab the line tool and kind of build over it. Okay? So I know that this dimension is 34 millimeters. Line tool, click and hold to go ahead and switch over to the arc tool. Finish it up, drawing the lines in place. Okay. Now, vetting the lines, go ahead and automatically uh, lock in place. Went ahead and allows that to be fully um, constrained. So we don't need to worry about adding in any extra dimensions, um, although we certainly could go ahead and put them in for notation if we wanted to. Um, but basically it's telling us that over constraining, so we're not too worried about that. From here, we're actually going to kind of use that projection to our advantage because we've got two sides that we can actually now cut or add. And in this case, we need to remove the extra section. Okay, and we're going to extrude that, negative 2.5. And then unfortunately, we kind of have to do the same thing on the other side because it hadn't happened. The nice thing about this though is we go ahead and tell it to go ahead and do the same sketch on the other side. And we're going to just project from this side, okay. hitting P to go ahead and project, finish the sketch, extrude, and we can go ahead and do the same negative 2.5 extrusion. Okay. So what's next is to go ahead and take care of the overall curvature. So approaching a similar path, okay grabbing our front view, projecting everything, so we've got the full shape. And then we can go ahead and start using kind of the, let's see, let's see if we can go ahead and just go straight to the fillet command, okay, nope. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a rectangle over everything, at which point I can, should now be able to go ahead and use fillet to go ahead and apply some. So I'm going to go ahead and hit three of the corners that were identical, okay? So one, two, and three. And the radius that I had for those was, I think, six millimeters. And then we've got a last one to go ahead and fill it where we have the larger curve. And that one, I think we've got as 20 millimeters, okay? So finishing up the sketch, we can now select, okay, the extra parts. And rather than having to flip around to the other side, projecting and all of that, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to have it go through the entire object, but rather than a cut operation, we're gonna tell it to intersect, okay? So it'll actually cut off basically the corners like we wanted. Yeah. We're getting to the point where we need to go ahead and add the handle to this. Yeah. So to add the handle, one of the things that I noticed when I actually uh, measured it is while the handle is kind of a curved rectangle, the fillet um, or the part for the handle to fit in is actually a pure rectangle. So I'm going to create a rectangle with a center point on the origin point that I've, which is why I did some of the mirroring early on. Okay. And I know that that measurements are 16 for height, five for width, and then finishing that sketch, I can extrude that inwards, okay. uh, 34, sorry, negative 34, to go ahead and clean that out. From here, I'm actually going to use the same kind of rectangle to go ahead and start creating the handle. So I'm selecting the inside that I can see from the right side, and I'm going to use the slot tool, okay, 
and use the overall slot to go ahead and model it. Okay, so starting on the bottom of the rectangle, going all the way up, and then setting it to the same width. Okay. Now, I need to go ahead and dimension the radius, okay, but I'm happy with basically what it locked into. Finishing the sketch, and then here's where we start thinking about the extrusion process. Okay. So, selecting the shape to go ahead and extrude, I know that the dimensions on that are actually pretty long. Uh, the 34 millimeters for the insert part, plus, let's see, don't know why it just did that. Okay, so 34 that gets us to the same distance but another 220 millimeters for the full length. Okay. Now, here's where you need to be cautious. Okay. Sometimes when you're doing an extrusion, okay, a lot of times you'll want to do a join command, okay, which will make it a single continuous object. Okay. In this case, we're going to have it add a new body. Okay. But to help explain this, okay, I'm going to leave it as a join command, okay, where this is now a single piece. Here's where we're going to go ahead and start talking about applying our materials and our appearance. Okay? So when I go into bodies and I right click on this, I can have it add physical uh, property, um, sorry, physical material or appearances. Okay? Going ahead and using the materials, okay? I know that it's called the handle cherry wood. Well, when I click and drag on cherry and put it onto the handle, okay? everything changes okay not what we want okay so i'm going to go ahead and undo that okay double click on the extrusion so i can edit that and i can tell that i actually needed a new body from that rather than continue the same object now under bodies we've got two pieces okay we can go ahead and call one Actually, we'll skip that part. Um, so now we can go ahead and right click, go back to the physical material, okay. find the cherry again, click and drag it onto either the object as we see it or onto the body itself. And that goes ahead and solves that, only applying it to the handle. Okay. From here, let's see if we can find it. Where is silicon? Okay. Uh, it's not letting me see silicon right off the bat. Actually, rubber silicon right there. Um, so we can then click and drag that onto the head. And while it's not necessarily the, uh, the green of the real life one, we're able to go ahead and see that. Now, while that talks about the appearances and the aesthetics of this, we still have one last little detail to go ahead and model, and that is the hole on the handle for the hook. So we're back to doing a sketch, grabbing the handle, the flat surface, grabbing a circle, and then, well, we can try and get it to lock in on a center point. We know five millimeters, okay. and then dimension to go ahead and get it to the base that was 13 okay and it's still not quite locking in um, so it's good practice we know that we want it to go ahead and fit appropriately so line construction okay and then I'm going to use symmetry to go ahead and lock in on that to go ahead and fix it in place At which point extrude shift it so we can see what's going on click and drag and we're cutting all the way through so at this point um, it's pretty much fully modeled you could go ahead and go back in add some other uh, fillets if you felt that it needs it but i think this pretty much captures uh, what i've got the uh, the fillets would be almost too small to measure um, but you could do it again for your aesthetic pleasures um, but overall you know this is why 
in Fusion 360, it makes sense to kind of have a plan, take a lot of dimensions before you get started with modeling, and think about how are you going to separate your different materials. Um, sometimes that's not going to matter. Other times, um, like this, where you're going for as much accuracy as you can, it's going to make a bit of a difference. So taking care of the, uh, the head first, keeping it fairly centered using the mirroring tool, made it pretty easy to go ahead and take care of the handle itself. And by having the extrusion of the handle made as a body rather than as part of the same object makes it a little easier. Other spatulas, other items, maybe you, again, that doesn't matter. But again, it's part of your initial research it makes it a lot easier to do effective modeling. Um, especially if you're going to be in a case where you have limited access to CAD software outside of, say, the classroom. So best of luck um, in your future models, and uh, I hope this helps.